Hi everybody, in this video I'm going to be showing off the new hand calculation feature for trusses. So the method we're implementing is the tried and true method of joints. So if you take a look at this example here, it's an example from the Hibbler's textbook, Structural Analysis 7th edition. So the units we'll be using is Imperial right now. So if you take a look at this truss, it's actually fairly difficult to implement with method of joints because, for example, when you're at this joint here, you notice that they're non-perpendicular, so you have to do simultaneous equations, so it's a little bit of fiddling there. And the question itself, it's only asking you for the axial forces in these three members. So most, in most cases, if you were to do this yourself, you'd use the method of sections, but we're just trying to stress test our new feature. So let's take a look at this now. With the structure solved, you can click Axial and Reactions to determine the values here as you've always done. But with our new Truss Hand Calculation feature, you are presented with a way to solve your structure in the standard hand calculation via the method of joints. So with the Evaluation section, you're provided with a summary of your structure, but it also brings up any warnings, for example, if your structure is statically indeterminate. But the good thing is, the software will attempt to solve your structure for as many joints as possible, even if the full structure is not solvable, if it's indeterminate. Now, we start off with reactions. So you have your equilibrium equations here. Then you move on to the joints. So you'll notice in the top left, you're provided with a summary of the of the values that are known at this point in time. So you previously solved the reactions, so you're presented with those at the top here. Then those values are substituted when they're needed and new values for member axial forces are found. So take note, we found F9 and we found F1. So when we move to joint five, you'll notice that F1 and F9 are presented at the top here. So you keep doing this until you solve new values. And so joint number six is an interesting one and this example in particular. So if you take a look at this, this is joint number I, and you'll notice that because these two members are not perpendicular to each other, that means you will have two unknowns in the two um, equilibrium equations for fx and fy. So what this means is that in order to solve this, you'll have to use simultaneous equations. So our software has no problems doing this. We have provided you the solution with simultaneous equations. And as you move along, it repeats this process. So one thing to note is that the order of the joints is not in sequential order. It goes in order of whatever can be found. So it goes one to nine, and then it comes back to the joints that it didn't solve in order to solve for all of the unknown axial forces. Now, at the very end, you're provided with a summary. So the summary gives you all the axial forces that you found. Positive represents tension, negative is compression, and zero is a zero force member. In a similar way, you're provided with the reactions here. So in order to make a comparison, the values here are done with the standard hand calculations for method of joints. Whereas if you look at the values here, the method used to solve this is with the finite element solver. That means the two methods are independent of each other. So you can make a comparison between the results you see here and the results you see in the calculations with our new tool. However, compare with your, your textbooks, with your lecturers, um, we're excited to see what you come up with um, with our new tool and we're happy to hear your feedback. Thanks and bye for now.